Hi there, I'm Tipper and I'm a brand ambassador and naturopathic herbalist with Neil's Yard Remedies and today we are going to have lots of fun because we're going to be doing my favourite thing and that's making our own products and we're going to be making a really gorgeous shower gel that to me sort of epitomises holidays and exotic sort of summer um, scents. So we don't need much stuff, we need essential oils and I'm going to be using ylang ylang, patchouli and sweet orange and then I've got a little blending bottle here and I think these make really beautiful gifts. And then I'm going to be using our Create Your Own Hair and Body Wash which is a plain, unfragranced base so you can make it into your own thing or you can use it as it is. And then I also have a flower remedy here which is called Unwind and I'll explain more about that later on. And then I have a little tag because I'm probably going to give this away to someone. So I know that many of you will use aromatherapy in some way uh, already. Uh, maybe you enjoy having a really lovely aromatherapy or essential oil infused bath in the evening and maybe you have a lovely fragrance candle on the side or maybe you treat yourself and every so often you go for an aromatherapy massage or you treat somebody you love to one. It doesn't matter what you do and how you use it, but all of those lovely, those gorgeous scents, they all have an effect on you. So they all make a difference to your well-being and your attitude. And I think we all recognise that our sense of smell has an instant effect. So for instance, I've got a lovely little pot of basil here. And if I crush the basil leaves, I release the essential oils and straight away I think of pesto and it actually makes me feel hungry straight away. So aromatherapy has this sort of instant effect on our sense of smell and that affects how we feel. So in the case of basil, it makes me hungry. But you could think of things that happen to you almost on a daily basis. So you might walk past a baker's and you smell bread and you feel hungry. Um, you might walk past a, a bush of jasmine and it reminds you of a beautiful summer's holiday. Or it could be something worse. It could be that you walk past uh, a certain man wearing an aftershave and it reminds you of a boyfriend that you had years ago and you want to run for the hills. So you recognise this the way that your sense of smell makes a difference instantly on your emotions and the way you feel. And when we look at the word aromatherapy, aromatherapy literally means treatment using scents. And it's nothing new. It's gone back literally thousands of years because the ancient Romans, the Egyptians, the ancient Greeks, they all used aromatic plants for different reasons. And they used them to support their well-being. And they used them, they burnt them to create an atmosphere for a ritual or spiritual uses. And that's still happening nowadays. So every time my partner's Greek and every time we go to Greece and we walk past a Greek church, you smell frankincense in the air because they burn the resin and that helps to get you into a prayerful state or a meditative state. So something that was used thousands of years ago is still used in exactly the same way today. The great thing about essential oils is that they work holistically. They work on body, mind and spirit and overall they help to create this sense of well-being, a sense of harmony or balance. And I think of them as the plant's essence. So when you create an essential oil, you're taking all of those unique benefits that the plant has and when you smell them, they're kind of passed on. It's like it's being paid forward. So essential oils can be taken from any part of the plant. So it could be berries or fruits or twigs, leaves, roots, stems, even barks and resins. So it's quite exciting when you get into that world of aromatherapy to just explore all of those different types of scents. And you'll find that you feel drawn more to some than others. So I, for instance, love the really sort of deep, dark, woody, earthy scents from things like barks and resins and roots. So, as I said, today we are going to be making a shower gel that really captures that sense of summer. So that feeling that you have when you're on holiday and your mind is at peace and you feel at peace. And it's a little bit exotic and it's sort of like those lovely warm evenings when you're out and you don't have a care in the world. So as I said, we're going to use our Create, I love our Create range because it's a pure, it's an unfragranced range. You can use it as it is because it's allergy certified, so if you have sensitive skin, 
or the best thing about it is you can get creative and make your own products. So they're completely personalized to you and your sense of smell. So we're going to be using the hair and body wash. And what's lovely about this is that you can use it as a shower gel, a foaming bath, even a hand wash. And they do make brilliant gifts. So we're lucky, we have blue bottles in abundance, but you can go um, online or to a shop and you can buy loads of really pretty little bottles and they make beautiful gifts. And as I said, once you start, you won't be able to stop. So generally, you can blend what smells good to you. There aren't really that many rules. If it smells good to you, then it probably works. And that's the most important thing but I did think it would be nice to have some little tips that I could share with you. So first of all, and this is quite tricky, in fact it's not tricky at all, it's actually really easy once you try and imagine removing your brain from a situation. It's about smelling with your heart rather than your head. Because I think we all do it, we all think, oh I'm having problems with this. So you go to a book or you go to Google and you think, what's good for it? And you might come up with lavender. But if you smell lavender, you may not actually like the smell of lavender, but you might be choosing it because you know what it does. And that's a problem because you're actually intellectualizing what you're choosing rather than going with what your body needs. So what I would say to you is when you smell an essential oil, try and remove your brain, try not to know what is on the bottle and just smell it. And smelling it from your heart and listening to what your body says and your body will quite clearly say to you that's not the one that I like today so choose with your heart not your head and then also there's a basic rule of perfumery which is using top middle and base notes now this is quite a nice to do and it does mean that you're more likely to create a really lovely blend so let's say top notes. So for instance, I've got orange here, sweet orange is my top note. And if you think about perfume, top notes are the fragrance that you smell when you first put perfume on your skin. They're usually light and airy and they're instant, but they're also the ones that disappear the most quickly. So for instance, citrus essential oils will often be your top notes. Middle notes, so here I've got ylang ylang as my middle note. And middle notes tend to form the heart of a blend. So they're what you smell after the top notes have disappeared. And often they're things like herbs, so things like lavender and geranium and rosemary, they all form those sort of middle or heart notes. Um, and I find them that they're often quite herbaceous. So sometimes people find them a little bit like Marmite. And then you've got your base notes. So my base note here is patchouli and, and base notes, sorry, they form the sort of the long lasting scent of the perfume. So this is what you smell a few hours after you've put your perfume on and all of the other notes have disappeared and you're left with that sort of like lasting fragrance. So it's like the impression you have after you've met somebody. And base notes tend to be deep and dark and earthy and they tend to be a lot of them from things like resins and barks and roots. It's not quite that simple though, nothing ever is, is it? Because some things actually sit in multiple categories. So go with what smells deep to you, what smells middle to you, and what smells top to you, and use one essential oil from each, and you'll end up with a really lovely blend. And the other thing is, and this is really the most important thing, is dilution. So we're going to be making a body product today, and with a body product you can blend up to two and a half percent because it's going to be diluted down. Now to put that into plain English, because my maths is terrible, particularly when I'm on camera, we're going to blend 100 mils, so that is 50 drops. And that's the maximum, so we probably won't go up to that much today. Now if you have sensitive skin or you have a very sensitive sense of smell, just stop where it feels right to you and if you have sensitive skin, blend up to 1%. So that's 20 drops in 100 mils. And you can go online and you go into books and you can see blending charts, they're really useful. And the other thing that's a really good my top tip is blend slowly. 
So when I first started making things, I was very gung-ho and I thought, okay, I just know what I'm doing and I'm just gonna pop loads of stuff in. And I ended, and ended up with products that smelt more like paint stripper than something that was really lovely. So remember that you can put things in, but you can't take them out. So even if you only add one drop of essential oil at a time, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it takes you half an hour to make a blend. It just as long as it ends up smelling really nice. And then the other thing is to keep a tally. So I always have a little scrap of paper or maybe if you get really get into making your own products, you could create a book with your recipes in because with the best will in the world, as much as you try to remember your blend, you always forget. So what I like to do is just jot down the essential oils that I'm going to use. And just keep a little sort of tally as I add the drops in so that I don't have to remember. So what I thought it would be nice to do is just smell the essential oils. It's a shame we can't have smelly vision, isn't it? Because Aromatherapy is so personal and so unique, but I always think it's quite useful if somebody else can sort of describe to you how they smell the oil and the benefit that they have to, on them. Just hear a little sparrow in the background. So let's start off with our top note, which is sweet orange. So I'm using smelling strips, but if you don't have smelling strips, which most of you won't, don't smell straight from the bottle because essential oils are incredibly concentrated, but smell from the lid. And that gives you a much truer sense of smell. And just smell from a distance or even just waft the essential oil. And it's quite nice to smell with your eyes closed because that shuts off your other senses so you can really tune in on the individual oil. So when I smell orange or any citrus oils, my instant sense is that I want to smile. If you imagine when you peel an orange and you get that burst of essential oils, it just makes you sort of feel happy, doesn't it? So when I smell orange, it makes me feel uplifted, it makes me feel positive, it makes me feel sunny. And think about where oranges grow. They grow in really hot climates and it's like they bask in the sunshine. They absorb the essence of sun. And then when you smell them, they give that sunshine back to you. So citrus essential oils generally tend to be loved by most people. So when we smell ylang ylang, ylang ylang is very different. I used to love this when I was uh, at art college. And um, it's kind of a teenager essential oil, isn't it? Then I went off it for a long time because of those associations. And recently I've just got back into it. And Ylang Ylang to me, it comes from Madagascar. And it has that real sense of exotic. So it has that sort of sense of geranium, but it's quite spicy as well. And if you think about Madagascar, lots of the sort of spicy essential oils come from there as well. So things like clove and black pepper. So you get that sort of heady ylang ylang and then you have that exotic sort of sensual scent as well. A lot of people can find ylang ylang quite overwhelming, it's quite a heady smell, but when you combine it with something that's citrusy, it really sort of lifts it and it makes it more uplifting than heady. And I use ylang ylang a lot when I'm having to do something where I feel a little bit shy, where I feel my words aren't flowing very well because ylang ylang is used to release inhibitions so it helps the words to come out more easily. And in fact, I feel a lot better after having smelt that already. And then the last essential oil is patchouli. And again, this is one that I remember from art college. So patchouli is really deep and dark and earthy and it doesn't want to come out of the bottle which doesn't bode well for blending does it i'm going to stand it on its head patchouli is deep it's dark it's musky it's earthy and it comes from a little shrub from asia and it's made from the leaves and i find it really grounding so Patchouli I find brilliant for when I'm feeling all up in the air, when my head is really busy and buzzing. And when I smell patchouli, it helps to bring me back down to earth. It has that sort of grounding benefit. So those are my three essential oils that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to smell them together to make sure I like them. 
And when I smell them together, it gives me a really rough guide of how they're going to smell when I blend them. That's really, really nice. So I have pre-put my base hair and body wash into my bottle because I didn't trust myself to pour it on camera. So I've done that already and I'm going to start off. Now I haven't pre-made this, so I'm going to do it live with you. So, and I'm used to um, blending already, so I'm going to be a little bit more fast than probably you would be if you're new to making a blend. So I'm going to go straight in, I'm going to add in, remember I can go up to 50 drops, I'm going to add in 10 drops of my sweet orange. And what we never want to do is shake our essential oil. So sometimes they, and particularly when you're doing this on camera, they don't want to come out of the bottle because you get a little airlock in the top of the bottle. So just take them out, give them a little tap, and then hopefully, so that's 10. They usually sort of come out more easy. So I'm going to anticipate I'm going to anticipate the Elang Elang and give that a little tap now. And I'm going to add in five Elang Elang because Elang Elang is much stronger than the sweet orange. It's very difficult to talk and count essential oil drops at the same time. Okay, so we've got five. And then patchouli I like, but I don't want it to come through too much in the blend. So I'm just going to add in three drops of patchouli. Hopefully. They're like buses. When the essential oil drops come out, they all come out at once. So, got one on its way. Okay. Second one is on its way. Um, when we're using essential oils, we don't shake the bottle. You just have to learn the art of patience, which can sometimes be quite difficult. Um, so, and wait for the essential oils to drop. Because if you shake the bottle, you don't get a full drop come out. So what I'm going to do then is just give my bottle a little shake. And that will blend the essential oils through the base and then I'm going to give it a little smell. And actually that smells really, really nice already. And I think I've got my balance of essential oils pretty good. And that's only actually 10, 15, that's only actually 18 drops. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to double it and then see how it smells. So I'm going to go up to 20 drops of orange, 10 drops of ylang ylang and six drops of patchouli. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so I've added my last drops of essential oil. So the last thing to add is a batch flower remedy, Unwind. And many of you will be used to using this in the form of rescue remedy. But I love flower remedies because they work on the emotions. And I think we all recognize how our emotions can have an impact on our well-being. And what flower remedies do is they help to harmonize or to balance your emotions so they have an impact on you. Um, and you normally take them under the tongue or in a glass of water. So you might put four drops in a glass of water. And in fact, I had some of this this morning. But the great thing I love is that you can use them topically as well. So you can put them into your product. So I'm gonna put four drops into my mum's shower gel and it will help to give her that sort of holiday vibe, that sort of sense of peace, when your mind sort of uh, is at peace and isn't buzzing and you feel, have that sense of space, don't you? So the last thing to do is give that a little shake and just write my tag for, so I'm gonna put to my mum and with a love heart, because of course I love my mum very much. I'm gonna put orange, uh, 20 drops, ylang ylang, 10 drops and patchouli six drops and then all I need is a little bit of garden twine or some lovely ribbon and just to attach my tag to my bottle and then whenever my mum smells this she will think about me so I'm just going to do this quickly it's always difficult isn't it to tie bows when you are under pressure because you become all fingers and thumbs so there we go. 
So I hope that you have enjoyed making a summery shower gel with me and I hope that you feel inspired to make your own. So take care, lots of love from me and from Neil's Yard Remedies. Bye bye. <laughs>